I'm Dave Runyon, and I work with a group of churches in the northwest part of the Denver metro area. And about a year and a half ago, we asked the mayor of one of our suburbs to come in and spend time with us, about 20 or so lead pastors. And we just asked him two questions. The first was, what's your dream for our city? And then the second one was, what are the obstacles that are keeping that dream from becoming a reality? And he had a lot of great things that he wanted to see changed in our city, areas of basic brokenness, uh, things like single moms, at-risk kids, elderly shut-ins. But after he got done sharing that list with us, he said something that really resonated with a number of us in the room. And he just said, you know, my dream is, is to live in a community in which no one falls through the cracks. And the only way I can see that happening is that we would become a community of great neighbors. And right when he said that, there was this kind of this silence, this eerie kind of <laughs> sacred moment in the room. And so we prayed for him and he left. And then afterwards, we're all sitting around in our circle and one of the pastors says, am I the only one here that's really embarrassed that we just invited our mayor in and asked him what we could do if we all worked together. And he basically just said, hey, if you could get your people to obey scriptures, I would love it. <laughs> like it would completely <laughs> change our city. And I remember driving home from that meeting and feeling convicted in my own life um, because I realized that the great commandment, this idea of love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself, had become so familiar to me that I really wasn't living it out. And Jesus takes this definition of neighbor and he makes it huge in the, in the parable of the Good Samaritan. You know, he assumes that we're loving the people that, that we live around. And then he tries to stretch everyone else in, in their understanding of what neighbor really is. But, but the story of the Good Samaritan is kind of like AP neighboring. And for me in my own life, and I think for a lot of us, we need to just start with the fundamentals. We need to start with the basics. We need to go back to, to kindergarten. And so my wife and I, um, over the last year or so, have really been wrestling with what does it look like to take the great commandment literally. And all of us as pastors have been wrestling with this. In fact, we felt so convicted by what he said that we decided to set aside our own agendas for our churches for three weeks here um, about a month ago in, in April of, of 2010. And we all just preached the same message to, to these congregations for about three weeks. And it was powerful because we were talking to 16, 17,000 people. And, and the idea occurred to us that maybe Jesus was a genius. Maybe this idea, <laughs> well, you know, what if Christians everywhere around the world or all over our city would really be intentional about building relationships with the eight people that live closest to them? You know, what, what could it look like? What we figured out is that if the 16, 17,000 people in our city would really do this, that we could potentially impact 160,000 households in our community. And it set me on this journey of kind of redefining what city transformation is, what it looks like to really change a city. And, and for me, the mayor's quote, this idea of living in a community where no one falls through the cracks, and the only way that he could see that happening is if we would become a community of great neighbors. That's just stuck with me.